occasionally it is difficult to classify what a grammar question is testing based on the choices. So um, what what's changing here between the choices? Well, we do have different tenses, right? Included is the past tense. Would include is kind of more like almost like a future hypothetical tense. Um, but then I notice uh, we also have commas coming and going. And, and any time punctuation is changing, it's probably not about just when does the sentence take place. It's probably much more structural. So I would classify this as a to and ing question. I know there's no to version of the word include here, but the, the premise of this, this grouping of, of questions is that they're, the verbs affect the structure. And so the, the, the punctuation being here is, is really a giveaway that I got to be careful how this sentence is structured. So I'm not even going to read the first sentence because I don't think it's about past, present, future here. I don't think it's about the tense in the normal way you think of it. So I don't care about the context quite yet. I want to understand the structure of this sentence. So uh, these extensive changes, let's just read A, these extensive changes including the addition of hundreds of new poems, the removal of some existing ones, and the insertion of prefatory material reflected the poet's evolving literary perspective and experience of the U.S. Civil War. So as I'm reading it, I'm kind of looking, where is my sentence? And A is forcing me to make the including part an extra clause, which sounds okay to me, because then I'm saying this, these extensive changes reflected the poet's evolving literary perspective and experience of the U.S. Civil War. That's the sentence. Then what are we doing? We're adding in an extra clause. So the extra clause needs a comma to start it off. So including is starting that extra clause. And then, hey, there's a bunch of commas there, but ignore those for a second because the comma that matters is at, at the end. So why are there other commas in between? Well, because we have a list, right? So these two commas here and here, those are list commas. We have a list of th three things. The addition of hundreds of new poems, the removal of some existing ones, and the insertion of prefatory material. But you should be looking at this and going like, why is there a comma at the end of the list, right? That We put commas within a list, but why are we putting one at the end? And it's because we are ending the list, which was itself an insertion into the sentence, an interruption. So if we've got a comma at the end to tell us this is the end of the interruption. We need a comma at the beginning to tell us this is the beginning of the interruption. Personally, I would have used two dashes here because this is way too many commas and it's confusing. So that's the whole point of the dash is it's distinctive. It looks different. So I would have put where these two commas in blue are, I would have put dashes instead, but I can't write the sentence. Um, so I think um, most of you are going to get this wrong because you're going to put C. I would think this is the trap. And this is probably what we get most often, um, yes, if we don't understand the rule, and yes, if we don't speak English very well, and we don't hear sentences well, but also if we're lazy. Uh, these extensive changes included the addition of hundreds of new poems, the removal of some existing ones, and the insertion of prefatory material. Yeah, sounds great. And if that were the sentence, if we ended right there, then yes, we would need to use the word included because that would need to be the verb of the sentence, right? The subject is these extensive changes and included is the verb. If we used an ing, then we, would, we wouldn't have a strong enough verb to anchor that sentence, but we have that later with the word reflected. So the re word reflected is the main verb of the sentence here, and so we don't wanna double up. So included can't work because it, it, we, we have basically like two sentences kind of smushed together, it doesn't make any sense. So we need the, the including part to be an extra clause, and ing verbs usually do that. This is one of the most confusing rules in um, the English language and, and also on the SAT, but um, I think we have a much better chance of understanding this question if we recognize right away that that's the rule that they're testing, is this kind of structural verb tense rule, not about when do things take place, not about singulars and plurals, right? We can't really uh, classify any of these verbs, uh, maybe D a little bit as singular or plural, but it's not about that. So this two and ing thing, even when there's no two, sometimes even when there's no ing, is, is really about the structure of the sentence. So if you see the verbs changing, but you also see punctuation changing, you gotta think about punctuation rules. And those rules are all about structure.